the first life on Earth emerged 3.5 billion years ago. Or so you're told. As it turns out, finding Earth's first fossils has not been a walk in the park, all thanks to rock cycles and the Earth's ever-changing geology. So how did scientists determine the age of the fossils? Does the discovery change the already conceived beliefs about life on Earth? Join us as we take you through the discovery and implications of the findings of the Earth's first fossils. Looking for signs of Earth's earliest life is more challenging than searching for dinosaur bones in a desert. The earliest life forms were small, the oldest species were no more significant than specks, so naturally, detecting or confirming what they are takes work. Consider finding evidence of ancient life, like finding a needle in a haystack, but with a twist. The haystack is the entire planet, and the needle? Well, the needles are microscopic cells or faint chemicals. So even if scientists find possible candidates, it is difficult to know if it is a sign of ancient life or just your regular old geological occurrence. Allison Alcott, a geologist from the University of Kansas, explains that dinosaurs and other fascinating creatures make up only a tiny piece of our planet's incredible history. Most life on Earth today is tiny and squishy. When searching for Earth's first fossil, we are not looking for shells, claws, or bones. Primarily, we are searching for microorganisms that must have lived in rocks. Then the real challenge becomes tracing the origins of the fossil trail. So how do you find out how old a fossil is when you do find one? Scientists typically focus on four lines of evidence when searching for signs of early life. In technical terms, these signs are called biosignatures. You can see one type of evidence with the naked eye, stromatolites. However, other traces are more difficult to identify. These include chemical remnants of fossils, degraded biological compounds, and microorganism fossils. Decoding these clues is a challenging task. One astrobiologist explains that fossilizing something without mineralized parts is extremely difficult. Some non-biological processes and phenomena can also mimic microbial life's shapes and chemical signatures. Discovering any one of these four markers is a good sign. However, Tara Jokic, an astrobiologist from University of South Wales, emphasizes that finding multiple markers together would undoubtedly strengthen the argument. Differentiating genuine signs of early life from ancient tricks is sometimes straightforward. For example, rock folds or other inanimate features can sometimes resemble stromatolites, and a cluster of tiny cells might actually be a sedimentary structure. The rocks that contain evidence of Earth's first life emerged billions of years ago and have undergone significant changes. Jokic points out that these rocks have been deformed, metamorphosed by heat and stress, and subjected to billions of years of weathering processes like erosion. As a result, only a few rocks remain exposed and hold clues to early life. Alcott remarks, due to billions of years of the rock cycle, not many rocks are suitable for searching for signs of early life. Uncovering evidence of early life requires understanding and compensating for factors that may obscure the truth. Jokic compares it to arriving at a crime scene and having to piece together what happened and who was involved. Sounds pretty tricky, right? All of this begs one question. Have scientists reached a consensus on which fossil is the oldest, or in our case, the Earth's first fossil? A study published on December 18, 2017, in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences confirmed the oldest fossils ever discovered. Not surprisingly, these fossils were found in a rock from Western Australia dating back nearly 3.5 billion years. They contained 11 complex microbes belonging to five different species. To examine the microorganisms, the researchers used a specialized instrument called a secondary ion mass spectrometer, also known as SIMS. To add to an already daunting task, SIMS is one of the rarest instruments used. The team dedicated nearly 10 years to developing the necessary processes for accurately analyzing the microfossils. As it turned out, this was the first time anyone had done this kind of analysis on old and rare fossils. The study built upon the previous accomplishments at WISC-SIMS, where they modified the SIMS instrument at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. They had to establish protocols for sample representation and analysis for modification. Additionally, they had to calibrate the necessary standards to match the hydrocarbon content of the samples of interest closely. 
Adding to the modifications, the team had to prepare the samples for Sims analysis carefully. Afterwards, these fossils were suspended at different levels within the rock and encased in a tough quartz layer. Each microfossil had a width of approximately 10 micrometers. In fact, the width of eight microfossils would fit along the width of a single human hair. By analyzing the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-13 isotopes, the SIMS helped scientists to determine the anatomical features of the microbes and revealed details about their way of life. As John Valley, a co-author of the study and a professor of geoscience at the University of Wisconsin-Madison explained, the difference in carbon isotope ratios correlates with their shapes. Their C13 to C12 ratios are characteristic of biology and metabolic function. Based on the chemical analysis, researchers concluded that the 11 fossilized microbes belonged to five distinct taxonomical groups. Some of the microbes were related to now extinct type of bacteria from the domain Archaea, while others were similar to microbial species still existing today. The analysis also suggested that these microbes lived when there was very little oxygen in Earth's atmosphere. Moreover, it was found that photosynthesis, as we know it today, had not yet evolved at that time. In fact, it is thought that oxygen did not appear on Earth until approximately half a billion years later. Consequently, oxygen was likely toxic and fatal for these microorganisms. Regardless of whether oxygen was deadly to the microbes, the results indicate that these are a primitive but diverse group of organisms. The fact that they exhibit complex and varied structures at such an early age in Earth's history demonstrates that life can take hold and evolve much more rapidly than previously assumed. But there's one issue here. It is believed that microorganisms found by the team are not the oldest fossil evidence of life on Earth. That distinction belongs to stromatolites, formations resembling mushrooms on rocks. If we consider the dissenting opinion, some of these stromatolites could be hundreds of millions of years older than the fossils the team discovered. However, this issue is resolved quickly. All because stromatolites themselves are not the fossilized remains of ancient life forms. The markings on the rocks are attributed to cyanobacteria, which researchers believe are often mistakenly referred to as blue-green algae. However, it's not algae. Although cyanobacteria would have acted similarly to algae by spreading across the water's surface to absorb sunlight. Now, the problem with this theory is simple. The geological processes that the rocks have gone under for over a billion years are the more apparent reasoning for the patterns observed on the rocks. That's why the published study stands as the strongest evidence of the first fossils on Earth. Now, the study's findings suggest two things. First, life originated on Earth around four billion years ago. Second, they support the increasingly popular idea that life is more common in the universe than we previously believed. According to J. William Schulf, the study's lead author and a professor of paleobiology at UCLA, 3.465 billion years ago, life was already diverse on Earth. That's clear. He further stated in a press release that the discoveries of his study tell us that life had to have begun way earlier. Moreover, it confirms how easy it was for primitive life to form and evolve into more advanced microorganisms. However, the findings also suggest one other astonishing thing. Because there are trillions of stars in the universe and the growing consensus among astronomers that exoplanets are common, the argument for the existence of life elsewhere in the universe is stronger than ever. Schulp had previously described the fossils in the journal Science in 1993 and confirmed their biological origin in the journal Nature in 2002. Yet, this is the first study to reveal the complexity of fossils and to provide a detailed description of what they are. In 2015, Schulp also made news for helping discover a deep-sea microorganism that has remained unchanged for over two billion years. The microfossils consist of tiny tubes and filaments of an iron oxide called hematite. They are believed to be the remnants of bacteria that once thrived underwater near hydrothermal vents, relying on chemical reactions involving iron for their energy. The most exciting takeaway is that discovering these structures opens up intriguing possibilities for investigating whether life exists elsewhere in our solar system. Places like Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, and Mars, which once had oceans, have the highest probability. Yet, the mystery remains. Will scientists find fossils dating back more than 3.5 billion years? 
It remains to be seen. If we find out, you'll be the first to know.